Hello, future corpses. Have you ever wondered what your last words will be? Oscar Wilde allegedly said, either that wallpaper goes, or I do. Winston Churchill said, I'm bored with it all. And Karl Marx said, last words are for fools who have not yet said enough. Now you might be thinking, when I die, I'm going to say something profound or funny. In reality, your last words will probably be, ah! Ah! Okay, jokes aside, this video is about a serious topic. Assisted dying. Assisted dying refers to prescribing life-ending drugs to terminally ill and mentally competent adults to administer themselves. So the goal of my channel is to spread ideas that help make the world a better place, and I think that addressing this issue is something that could prevent a lot of pointless suffering. Here's a quote from David Sinclair, who describes losing his mother. Suddenly she was writhing on the bed, sucking for air that couldn't satisfy her body's demand for oxygen, staring at us with desperation in her eyes. I know some people die peacefully, but that's not what happened to my mother. In those moments she was transformed from the person who had raised me into a twitching, choking mass of cells, all fighting over the last residues of energy being created at the atomic level of her being. Now before we delve more into this, I want to thank today's sponsor. Raid Shadow Legends! Get ready to raid. Okay, I'm kidding. Let's talk about death. So talking about death is pretty taboo. I think when I was very young, my parents didn't openly discuss death with me. Yeah, I think the fact that I'm trapped inside a decaying body was left unrevealed in order to protect me from the darker side of life. There are people who have noticed the taboo around discussing death and want it to change. In many parts of the world, you can attend death cafes where you can, and I quote, eat cake, drink tea, and talk about death, which coincidentally sounds like my ideal first date. So, what have you been up to? Hmm, so I've been thinking about what my last words will be. Oh yeah? Yeah. They're probably going to be... Ah! There's also a death positive movement, which is less about this... I don't want to die of heart disease, but it runs in my family. Excuse me, all deaths are equally valid. And more about this... Death positive is saying it's okay to be interested in death. So being death positive is saying, hey, we want to improve our culture. We want to have more eco-friendly death practices. We want to have better conversations around death and nobody has to hide that. But what seems even more taboo than death itself is the process of dying. The pandemic has made death feel more real than ever before, but for all the statistics about how many people are dying from COVID, how much discussion have you heard on how it feels to die from COVID? Now, while many of us, myself included, have thought about how we would like to die. In my own bed at the age of 80, with a belly full of wine and a girl's mouth around my cock. <laughs> we don't actually spend much time contemplating how people are actually dying. So, what is it like to die? Cancer is one of the leading causes of death. In 2018, there were 9.5 million cancer-related deaths worldwide, and that figure is expected to increase to 16.4 million by 2040. Unfortunately, we can't talk to dead people, so most accounts come from family members who have watched their loved ones die, or medical professionals who have watched their patients die. Here are some examples. My little sister died of leukemia when she was 11 years old. She died in what I imagine might be similar to that of a victim of severe torture. Cancer is a bad way to die. Proper palliative care can make it less painful, but that doesn't always happen. My father died from pancreatic cancer. He died about seven months after diagnosis. The treatment made him lose control of his bowels, including during the night, which was very distressing for him. He moved into a separate bed from my mother. He was in pain, with constant nausea. He stopped eating and drinking and stopped taking medication. His breathing became more labored. And with each breath, a dark brown, foul-smelling liquid bubbled and oozed out of his mouth. This continued until he finally breathed his last. One account illustrates how extreme suffering can make someone's personality unrecognisable from their previous self. No medication made the pain bearable. A woman who had been generous and good-humoured turned into someone hardly recognisable to her loving family. Paranoid, snarling, violent. Okay, you get the picture. There's bound to be a lot of variance in how bad our deaths are, but the general theme doesn't seem good. We have gotten better at keeping people alive for longer, and we owe a big debt of gratitude to people who have developed better pain relief and anaesthesia, but nonetheless, it's still quite common to suffer a lot before you die. 
Some people who are diagnosed with a terminal condition learn about the terrible journey that lies ahead of them and would prefer to die in a more peaceful way. Which brings us to the story of Brittany Maynard. A year after getting married, Brittany Maynard began suffering from severe headaches. And at just 29 years old, a doctor gave her devastating news. She had stage four terminal brain cancer. The prognosis kept getting worse. I went from having a few years to six months. This cancer was going to kill me and the way it was going to kill me was terrible. She decided she wanted to live the rest of her life on her own terms. So Brittany and her husband Dan moved from California to Oregon, which at the time was one of just four states where terminally ill patients could legally get drugs to end their own lives. She chronicled her journey in videos watched by millions. I can't even tell you the amount of relief that it provides me to know that I don't have to die the way that it's been described to me that my brain tumor would take me. On its own. An important distinction here is between assisted dying and assisted suicide. According to the non-profit organization Dignity in Dying, assisted dying refers to allowing a dying person to have control over their death if they believe that their suffering is unbearable. Assisted suicide, on the other hand, refers to the practice of assisting a person who is not dying to take their own life. And in this video, I'm talking specifically about assisted dying. Some people who oppose assisted dying argue that it just isn't humanity's place to decide who gets to live and who gets to die. And to that, Brittany's husband had this to say. Brittany is not choosing between living and dying. That, that choice to continue to live is no longer on the table for her. The only choice that Brittany, uh, or the only option that she gets to choose between is two different methods of dying. One would be gentle, the other would be struggling and in pain. And, and that's where Brittany simply said that, you know, she would prefer to be able to look around the room um, and say, I love you to the people, uh, to her friends, her family, and then have a gentle dying process. Mm -hmm. Left to run its course, I mean, she was already suffering from pain that not even morphine could alleviate, the inability to sleep for days on end, um, the nausea, the vomiting, the seizures are what terrified her the most. When those would occur, uh, the small seizures would leave her unable to communicate, to speak typically for 20 to 30 minutes. When she would have the full grand mal seizures and every muscle in her body is contracting, as she's coming out of those, blood's coming out of her mouth because she's bitten through part of her tongue. <clears throat> That's... <clears throat> that... Thanks. That's just the reality of what she's she's dealing with and and so for her what comes next as that tumor continues to grow the likelihood that she would go blind that she would become paralyzed right. that's where Brittany said I will not die that way right. I want to be myself I want to have a little bit of control of how my final few days on this green earth play out when we debate ethical issues like assisted dying things can get kind of abstract and perhaps we lose track of the fact that we're talking about real people here like you and me who are perhaps dealing with some of the most difficult, scary, and challenging moments in their lives. So Brittany moved to a state where assisted dying was legal, but even in that state, the drug must be self-administered, which actually puts her in a difficult situation. Because while she was capable of enjoying life for longer, she also knew that at any point she could have a stroke or a seizure that may cause her to lose the capacity to self-administer the drug and therefore be left to die in the way that she feared most. If a seizure comes, or worse yet, a stroke, and that affects her ability, her motor cognitive function that she cannot self-administer because the patient has to drink, you know, it's four or five ounces of uh, medication. Um, and that was a real fear. She would be trapped in her own body and she would then be forced to die exactly the way that she would, was trying to avoid. Here's how Brittany ended her life. She drank the, uh, the medication within five minutes she fell asleep. Her breathing slowed to the point where she passes away. And um, it's the most peaceful thing that you would ever expect or even want. When I saw that, the first thought that I had uh, was, if I live to be 100, I don't care what I'm suffering of. I'm like, that's what I want. I want to go that way. That was it's what, what people... Um, they always say, oh, I'd, I'd prefer to die in my sleep. Not even aware of it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's exactly what Brittany got. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, her passing was truly peaceful. And the thing that makes me feel okay, as well as her parents and her family, is that she was in control of it. A determined uh, individual who 
planned and, and thought everything through. It feels and, to me, Dan, like you're proud of her for that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not optimal, I know. It would have been better for Britney to live a very long and very happy life with her newly wed husband. But the choice she made was far better than the alternative. The difference between how Britney died and how she might have died without assisted dying is perhaps difficult for us to fully appreciate. The way many people are dying today is often, quite frankly, torture. Assisted dying is illegal in 39 out of 50 US states and in 39 out of 44 countries in Europe. Now, if I had the choice between being tortured for the last weeks of my life or dying painlessly, I would choose the latter. But by criminalizing assisted dying, we aren't even allowing people to have that choice. Interestingly, this is one of the rare instances in which in certain contexts, we will treat animals better than humans. Where I live in the UK, if someone has a pet dog that is suffering terribly and has very little hope of having a good quality of life, they will euthanize them as a way to prevent unnecessary suffering. So paradoxically, the high value we place on human life seems to have created a world where we allow each other to suffer terribly at the end of our lives. Some opponents of assisted dying argue that it's a slippery slope that will lead to more and more killing for less and less justifiable reasons. But assisted dying has been legal in the Netherlands for over 30 years and in Oregon for over 20 years and there just isn't evidence of a slippery slope to disaster. In fact, after observing the effects of this legislation, more countries in Europe, like Belgium and Luxembourg, and states in the US, like Washington and California, have legalized assisted dying. We should also consider another kind of slippery slope. If we accept that certain humans have to undergo torture at the end of their lives against their will, might this not dispose us to being more likely to accept the torture of humans and animals in other contexts as well? In the United Kingdom, there is overwhelming public support for the legislation of assisted dying. In 2019, a survey of over 5,000 adults suggested that 84% of the British public supported assisted dying proposals. And that support is consistent across demographics like age, region, and social grade. There's also broad support across faith groups with over 80% of religious people in support. The majority of doctors support assisted dying and around 1,000 people each year do receive help to die illegally from a doctor at their request. And a doctor who does so is risking up to 14 years in prison. We are quite literally criminalizing doctors for helping their dying patients to suffer less. It is high time that the British government and other governments around the world legalized assisted dying. In doing so, they would prevent the pointless suffering of people who know they are dying and who want to end their lives in a more peaceful way. What good is a healthcare system if it ignores the will of the people it's supposed to serve? If it prolongs suffering rather than relieves it? Unfortunately, death is probably coming for all of us. But even when death is inevitable, extreme suffering doesn't have to be. If you want to help create a world where people are allowed to die without agony, here are some things you can do. You can raise awareness of this problem by sharing this video. You can head over to dignityindying.org.uk and get involved with your local campaign group. You can sign a petition to legalize assisted dying, which you'll find pinned in the comments section of this video. If 100,000 people sign this petition, it will be considered for a debate in Parliament. And you can write it to your local MP, letting them know that you think that assisted dying should be legalized. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I want to die in style. And with that in mind, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, The Suicide Pod. The Suicide Pod will cause you to lose consciousness and die painlessly in just 10 minutes. Head over to their website and type in the code HUMANEHANCOCK for a 10% discount on both your first and your last session. I mean, seriously, look at how cool that pod is. That's enough to make even happy people want to kill themselves. Okay, I'm kidding about the sponsorship, but I do seriously think that assisted dying is often preferable to a natural death. This pod does actually exist, but don't be getting too excited because it hasn't been approved yet. And on that note, big thank you for watching the video. Special thanks to my patrons for making these videos possible. You guys are the best. I'll be seeing you very soon with another video. Okay, bye!